literature man you know in, in texas we have 13,000 kids right now in foster care waiting to be adopted 13,000. we have over 30,000 evangelical churches here in texas over 70,000 pastors so what should christianity look like with that many christians when there's kids in foster care waiting to be adopted so what most christians are doing is they're adopting from out of country they're spending like 20 to 30 thousand dollars or they're doing ivf and you know we believe that christianity should the fruit of christianity should be to suck up all these orphans right but nobody wants them because they're not babies right and they're broken they're hurt they're damaged kids right so but god loves them as much as he loves us and our own kids right so you know that's what we tell people to think about you know like the bible says whatever we don't do to the least of these we don't do to him and whatever we do to the least of these we do to him right and we could make abortion illegal in one day in texas oh the governor would just have to sign it just like the governor of california signed for making marijuana legal or you know because they're opposing the federal government just I don't agree with the good yeah because it's murder right you don't the pro-life movement regulates murder they say when, where, and how you can kill babies. That's like saying, well, let's regulate how I cheat on my wife. Yeah. No, you don't do that, right? right. You say it's illegal. It. So, yeah, and why? Because Christ died for us, and we love him. And if we love him, we do what he says. That's what I tell my kids. You know, if you love me, listen to me, right? And that's what God says to us. If you love me, do what I say. The Bible says to expose evil. To hold back those being led to slaughter. To defend the innocent. Be a voice for the voiceless, right? 60,000. Are you guys from Texas? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Okay, so Oklahoma is the same, basically the same. I don't know exactly what the states, the stats are, but there's a, um, an abolitionist running for governor right now in Dan Oklahoma. Fisher. Yeah, Dan Fisher. We know about Dan so, Fisher. We got some friends in Bloodway. Oh, do you? Okay, great. We appreciate man. the work, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. Hey, God bless you guys, yes, too, sir. man. It's been an honor to talk to you guys. Thank you for stopping. Oh, yeah. Good luck. All right. Hey, God bless. They're mad at us, huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we're not. There's there's nobody here that we're mad at or upset with. Yeah, there's, we were talking about it. We have friends that do age. Age. And, uh, or what is it? Age. Age. Yeah. Yeah. It just means abolish human abortion. Right. Yeah. So yeah. then there, we saw some groups that looked like they were Well, those guys that are like the like oh, they, you watch probably look like the most hate you know hate the church the most is probably me. Uh, I don't hate the church. I'm just calling them to repentance because right, that I know that I understand. Like 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 what happened in Amos five and Jeremiah seven? Like <laughs> like Amos went to the temple right to the Jewish people, the people of God, the people following God. He didn't go to like the evil cultures that hated God that that sacrificed to Baal right. He didn't go. He went to the temple right and he said God hates your worship. You know, though your prayers be many, I, I won't hear them. Your festivals, they're a stench to my nostril. I hate them. What was going on? Child sacrifice was in their land. They weren't doing anything about it. You know, I mean, imagine this. Like, this is like, hard for me to imagine. Probably you guys too. But God even said, they sacrificed their own children. That's something that never even entered my mind. But can you imagine that? Like, God's like, how could they do that? You know? Like, God loves us, you know? And w you know why women have abortions? Because men don't treat women the way they really should. If we really honored and loved them, lifted them up, cared about them, women don't have a natural inclination to kill their babies, you know? But when we use them as sex objects, when we treat them, you know, badly, when we have sex before marriage, you know, when we destroy them spiritually, that's what happens, right? So we really need, as men, we need to stand up, defend women, defend orphans, you know? So, you know, so think about that. Are you guys married? Uh, uh, so married in uh, so about five months. Yeah. Awesome, man. <laughs> Marriage is awesome, man. I love being married, you know? So um, it can be bad too. <laughs> but you know, if the person you marry doesn't like you, it says a lot about you, right? Because that person should be like, that guy loves me. He rubs my feet. He cares about me. He like, like, how could the person you're married to not like you? 
there must be something wrong right so when you get married you have a lot of responsibility as a man and if you get a divorce they automatically blame the husband right just he wasn't a good ruler of his family right so when you get married think about the orphans too right like first like here, here's something that pastors always say that I always disagree with. Pastors always say, like, I'll say, hey, what's the main thing? And they're like, sharing the gospel. I'm like, wrong. The Bible says that the main thing is loving God with all your mind, heart, strength, loving God with everything. Like, more than sharing the gospel, God cares about your relationship with Him. That's the most important thing. What's the second? Loving your neighbor as yourself. When you love your neighbor as yourself, you share the gospel with them. But imagine this. Imagine there was a kid over here starving, and I just shared the gospel with them, but didn't feed him. That would be wicked, right? That'd be evil. I could feed him and share the gospel with him. Well, what if I just fed him, but didn't share the gospel with him? That would be wicked, right? That'd be evil, too. Well, we're the hands and feet and eyes, you know, of God, right? We're the bride of Christ. So we should save these kids. Teach them about Christ. You know, the church should do that. I mean, how do we have 70,000 pastors here in Texas and 13,000 kids rotting in foster care? You know who's adopting them? Same as in Oklahoma, the gays and lesbians are adopting them. You know, and now to go through foster care, some states are even making you say that it's okay for gays and lesbians to adopt kids. They're actually coming out for you to foster. You have to say, you sign a paper. I can't sign that. But we adopted six kids out of foster care. And they are jacked up kids. <laughs> they are. But you know who changed the most? Me. Like it changed my heart the most. You know, like I I, one, I cried for like a week because our one daughter is just such a pain. It's so hard on our family. And I, and I cried for like a week begging God to help us, right? You know what he did? He lowered my expectation. <laughs> that wasn't the help I wanted. I wanted him to fix her, you know? But me being able to love her, even though she's in so much trouble, is fixing her, you know? But it's like us, like we just get perfect in a day, right? Like we have to work out our sanctification, right? We get better all the time. As soon as we like figure out, oh, we gotta put that away in our lives, then God shows us something else that we've been blowing it in, right? So, appreciate, appreciate your demeanor too. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. I appreciate you guys. Hey, God bless you guys. Thanks for. Thanks for listening, man. Oh, yeah. God bless, man.